remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Don't throw out your old countertops. In this video, we're gonna teach you step by step how to renew your old surfaces using epoxy, a heat gun, and some color additives. This process couldn't be more simple, and we're gonna show you how right now. Stay tuned, enjoy the video. Guys, I'm using a drywall pan. I'm gonna spread everything out in a dirty pour fashion using that pan as my reservoir. We might get a different look. Let's try it out. All I'm doing now, guys, is coming in and just moving it into the spots that haven't been really hit, okay? So I could just come in here with my hands and just start to start to just tap it. I'm gonna move it in and paint the edges, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is use a heat gun to move this material around just so everything will flow properly. What I can do on these dry spots too is after I do this, I'm gonna use the excess in any of those little buckets and just come through here and spot touch them. But all I'm doing is breaking surface tension at this point because the epoxy is self-leveling. It's gonna wanna level into place. If you didn't want this um, as busy, just use less colors. If you want it busier, use more colors. I used 14 colors, so that's a lot in one piece. But as you can see, a lot of them come from the same family of color. It's just slightly different. But using the spray paint, you can see the cells that you're getting, that's really fun in a piece like this. And another note is the spray paint was on top of the can right here. So you can see like the lacing and that structure that's found in that piece. But then the spray paint was buried here and you're getting the different effect, okay? All I'm doing here, guys, is just warming that epoxy up where those low points were, where I had to push the material. That'll help it all level and become very, very uh, organic looking, okay? Stay tuned to the end of the video. We're gonna use our excess and we're gonna create a small sample piece so that you can see how you can emulate the same color in a kitchen over and over again by using the same recipe. This is a real wild piece. You're gonna get lots of contrast because we made those buckets in, in different forms and fashions. We didn't use the same exact recipe, the same amounts, and that's what we're actually looking for. We're looking for that uniqueness found in Mother Nature. I really love how this has come out. I don't know if I wanna keep messing with that. Um, I may just pull the tape, work those edges, and I'll just move the uh, material around those edges and then uh, do a clear coat on this tomorrow. I really like this sample. This is a great example of how to do that multicolor dirty pour without tilting the piece. Now, if I wanted to tilt the piece at this point, I can really create movement, almost marbleize the piece. By doing this in place, you're gonna get somewhat harder lines. Now I could use a, ske a squeegee and uh, skip trowel this. I could spray spray paint and fracture that with metallics. I can do a plethora of different techniques, but part of the problem that I face is knowing when to quit. Can you guys relate? You gotta know when to stop. This is hard to beat. This is a home run. This is out of the park. What do you guys think? Do you like this piece better than tilting it or would you have tilted it? Let me know in the comments below. Option A, tilt it. Option B, leave it alone.
bonus round, guys, time for the bonus content. We're gonna take all the excess material in these Dixie cups. And we're gonna actually do our own dirty pour on a sample. Pro tip, make a sample and have a board prepped and ready to go because it wouldn't be feasible for me to bring this giant piece in my truck and show a customer. It would, however, be feasible for an 18 inch by 12 inch piece to go in the work truck and show a potential client what we can create over their existing surfaces. This is a sample that we created mimicking a Brazilian stone called Ubatuba granite. We're actually gonna sand this and pour right over this. Why? Because I got lots of samples of Ubatuba. I perfected it and I don't need this sample anymore. So I'll just redo this one. Look at what this stuff starts doing right here. You know, when, when you first pour that out, it, it kind of looks somewhat muddy, but give it a chance to do its thing, you know, and you'll, you'll be shocked. I like putting that diamond dust and gold dust in the pieces. It, it adds a lot. And, I, and you know, I don't know, I don't know if I want to add much more to this. I got a little bit of drips right here. I'm just going to fill in some of this just where it was a little bit low. I'll just go around my edges, make sure I got material flowing because as this flows, it'll just go over my edges and really do a good job on your edge. Hey guys, Mitch here, Stone Coat Countertops. Do you want to learn how to turn wood into epoxy? Click this link. It's going to take you on over to our products page. That's where you're going to find all the exciting additives and that awesome Stone Coat Countertop epoxy that is durable, scratch resistant, zero VOC, long working times, and second to none. Click the link.